basically it. So we're going to show you how to make some more flowers. Um, if you've seen one of my previous ones, you'll see these are the ones that I'm currently working on to show you. So I've just filmed this one, um, so that one will be up for you to check out. So why not check it out? I will try to link it at the end of this video if I remember. So, but this time around, you still have these ones. Again, these three are all done with square looms and a round one, but varying different ones. This one was done with a square loom and two of the round ones and a rosebud centre. This one was done on just the square one and done three layers. And this one was done one layer on the square and one layer on the round and then the yarns just twisted up a little to give this bubbly look. So I'm going to be showing you how to make this one. Um, they just have the flattened out rings. This just, I don't know. You can twist these up yourself if you want them or you can have them out flat. It's a personal preference. I just thought it looked quite funky like that. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we're going to show you how to do this. So all we need for that one is your large square and your middle size circle because the large one doesn't fit on here with the square. And then I like to keep my centre stick in because I find it easier um, when coming to do this type of centre. You need the hole in the middle and this helps keep a nice neat centre to work with. So. All you need, obviously, is your loom, an embroidery needle, um, tapestry thread rather, sorry. Let's try that again. All you need is a um, tapestry needle or embroidery needle, yarn needle, whatever you want to call it. Basically, something big enough to fit your yarn through. Your pair of scissors, your loom and your yarn. So, I'm going to start by doing this first layer, so that's these squares, we start with them first because obviously we want the flower on top, so we need to do that first, so these little notches each have a little actual notch in it, so you're going to want to put this down through and tie just gently around, so just poke it down through, and you want to just do a little, it doesn't have to be a Brilliant not because you want to be able to undo it. You just literally want to wrap it around, give it a little pull, and if you can, give it a little tug so that it's underneath that notch. That just makes it more stable while we're using it. Okay, so if you haven't used one of these before, it's just a matter of wrapping yarn around each of these threads in an order to create what you want. Okay, so if you haven't used these leaves before, you want to just wrap around each thread. So I'm just going to go up, around. If you hold your finger up above, it prevents it coming off. And then you can just poke it down so it's in the right place. You can just wrap up and down, well, up and around and go around. But I prefer to turn my loom, so that's what I'll be doing. You don't have to. But I'm just going to be going around each one of these. Just drop my ball down a minute so we've got a bit more gravity on the strands. So, as you can see, as I go around, I'm going in between these ones and I'm going either side of this. And this is what's going to help create my perfect centre hole by going either side. So, try to remember to go either side. It's not 100% necessary if you get one in the wrong way, but it just it makes it easier for sewing if you've kept them all in the correct order. So, we're just going to keep going around. Sorry if I go off camera, it's just to be close enough for you to see gives me very little manoeuvrability, so I just have to try to stay on camera as I do this, because I'm not a pro. <laughs> okay. So we just keep going. Now there might be other ways to wrap this. Other people might find a better way. Um, I'm self-taught, so this is just how I do it. Um, if you find another way that suits you better, then do that. It doesn't matter. As long as they're wrapped, all the rest of the processes are the same. So if you wrap in a different way to get the same end result, it doesn't matter. So 
you're just going to keep going. Remember, push down your ends so none of them come popping up. So, this big square one takes a little while. And you can see it's going to create different lengths of your end, and that's going to be easier to create the shapes when you weave. And as you can see, you can create slightly different shapes depending on how you weave. See, that one's a much smoother than that one. And this is a personal preference, just how you weave in the ends. So it doesn't matter, they all start with the same base. Oops. Moving that one over there, it's not necessary, but just it makes it better for my personal reference. There, we're just going to keep wrapping around. See, we're almost to the end. Remember to keep pushing down, especially in the middle, because as you go, they're going to get more bulky and you don't want it popping up encouraging the ends to pop up because then everything will unravel and you don't want that. So, one last wrap around and we would have finished the green layer. So that's it, we're back to where we started. So that's the green layer and as you can see there is one loop on every layer of that square. And that is our leaf layer complete. So what you can do is just gonna take your end, the yarn, and just gonna give it a little tie. Try to keep tension on the working strand until you've tied it off because you don't want them unraveling on you. So just go like that and again pop it underneath. It's a bit fiddly when you're trying to do it on camera anyway. <laughs> There you go, and snip your end, and that one is now ready to sit there until you've got your flower done to then take off and start weaving. Well, you'll weave before you take off. I, I do anyway, I find it easier. So, you pick your flower colour. In this case, we're going with pink. So, we just grab the pink, move my yellow strands up way here. Okay, and we just start it the same way. So we're just going to poke it down. I know it gets a bit difficult because you're running out of room, and sometimes these yarns don't like to poke through. But you just persevere, and it get round. So poke it through. Give it a little tie. Preferably pop it underneath if you want. But obviously, it's getting a bit crowded by this point. And then we're going to do the same as we did. But obviously, we only want to work this middle one. We don't want to work these outside edges. So we're going to go up through the middle just like you did before, but we're going to hold it on here while we go around. See, so that then goes only around the middle ones. And that's all you want. So it's the same process, but we're just going to be wrapping around the centre instead of the. Um, wrapping around the middle one, sorry, not the centre, <laughs> until we get around the ends. And again, this is a really simple process, it's just a matter of repeating the same step over and over until you have one loop on every strand. Keep the tension because you don't want it popping off. Now, this is much easier when you're not trying to do it on camera and trying to make sure you get the angles correct. <laughs> so it's not as fiddly as it looks, I promise. Just a matter of getting it around. So. Just keep going until you've got them all wrapped. You can see they're slowly getting there, we're about halfway now. I haven't counted the spokes on this, so I don't know how many spokes it is for those who have the different style flower looms with some spokes. I'm afraid I don't know. 
if you want to know I can always count it and comment in the thread so just ask okay, almost to the end just keep pushing it down because you don't want it to come up and off do you? not when you've done all of this hard work if it does unravel, just catch it. Oh, keep going. And that one. Almost done. Last one. Okay, so we're now at the end. We have spoke a loop around each spoke of the pink which is a little hard to see because it's pink on pink but if you just look you can see them there okay so again what you're going to do is you're going to tie just gently wrap it around you want to keep tension on this one until you've tied it so that's what my finger was doing there you can do it however many different ways just as long as you keep the tension on it then wrap around and that's that done so we can just snip that off and give them a good little pull to make sure they're all there and tucked in okay so next we've got to work the center to secure it so what you want to do grab your length of yarn I use my wingspan but five foot nothing I don't have a much of a wingspan and that's the length of thread I use you can use any colour, but I'm using yellow, obviously. Now we need to tie through the centre. So obviously you can't work the centre when you've got this, so you've got to lift it off. So you've got to, what you've got to do is gently ease off the two looms. Now you want to do this so that they both lift up together and you don't push on any of them, because otherwise you'll lose the loops. But then you just gently come under, pull out, and then ease them back on and now as you can see you have your very neat centre hole because your little post kept your hole nice and clean so we're just going to go in through the end through your centre there and up through the centre and pull your end through leave enough of your tail to weave in the end so you want a reasonable length left of your tail and just hold that to secure it so, what we're going to do is each one of these flower petals is around a post. So you run around and there's a little hole in it. So you want to go down to that post and then across to the centre so you can go out through that hole. And just pull your foot through. Just unhook it when it gets caught because it inevitably will get caught. Now obviously make sure you're keeping hold of your tail end until you've done a few because otherwise it's just going to unravel on you so we're going to go back up through the centre give a little tug but not too tight until it's secure and then we're going to go into the next one so we went into that one last time you can see so now we want to go into this one I like to go from the post straight down and then across because that way you make sure you're catching all of the threads in the right places and then down. Okay. Try not to catch the post as much as I do. I'm sure it'll be easier for you. I find when doing it, if you tip upside down when you're pulling it, it stops it catching the post. But obviously I can't do that while I'm on camera because you can't see it. <laughs> so we're just going to keep going up and we're going to do this all the way around, catching in the middle of each one of these posts. We'll be doing two rounds because we want to catch all of the green on the outside too. So we're going to be doing two rounds of this and I'll show you how to do the second round because the second round is ever so slightly different because we'll be going through a different place on our petals. So we're just going to keep working round.
try to make sure you give a good tug because you don't want this loose you want this to be securing your yarn in place so that your petals don't slide about when you finish with it If you happen to miss one, don't worry about it, just go back and go back through it, no one's going to notice. Just make sure that none of these are popping off until you've got it all secure. Just pull the thread back on my needle a bit here because it's coming off. There we go. You can tell which one you've been through, because if you run your thing through, you can see you hit yellow. But there, you don't, you only hit pink, so you know that's where you need to go next. Okay, so I hit yellow there, pink here, so that's where I need to go. So I just keep going, so if I cut off it's because my battery is about to die on my camera. See, this one is actually catching over that last strand we put on, so it's going to start securing the last level. And that strand won't notice across there because this will wrap over them all and make the strand disappear underneath. Almost to the end, and that's half of the round complete. Ooh. If you don't drop the needle back out through the centre, oh. Again, just look to see if you hit yellow or if you hit pink to whether you've been in that one before if you're not sure. Almost done. One more to go. Ooh, we can get that through. the last one. There you go and this is the first half of the centre securing done. 
See, so we've now done in between each one of these petals. The next time round, we're going to go in the, on the outside edge of each petal, surrounding around, so we'll go over the top. This will help secure in the green ones. So I'll meet you back in a second and we can do that. Okay, so we've just finished doing this round and what we need to do is a second round that's going to fill in each individual gap. See, so we went into these last time as you can see, but what we're going to do this time is go in between those because all that does is helps catch the green. We're going through each one of these. You see in this one is actually a loop. So that's why we do the second row, because we want to make sure we catch these petals. Some of these are cool when we do this one. Some of these are actually just in the middle, so they don't get caught when we do it. They're just loose. And though that might hold it in place, there's a greater chance of them slipping out. So that's why we do the second round. So, as you see, we went through the bottom last time. Um, through one of here, so we're going to go back up again through the middle, just like we did. And then we're just going to pick a spot, doesn't really matter where you start, because it's reasonably secure now, so just pick anywhere. But just go in between, can you see that, we're going in between, and then down. If it doesn't catch anymore. And we're plugging. See, so it just blends in and it just gives a second layer for security. So, go through. So, we went in there last time, so we're going in here this time. So, we're just going in between them all. We're just going to do that all the way around. So, no different than before. really helpful if you don't pull the yarn out of your needle. <laughs> if you do, just pop it back on. And thread it on through. Okay, so you can see if you pull gently where it's getting tighter, and that's here. So we went there last, so we're in this one. tail ends out of the way a minute. Try to hold your tail ends out of the way and then they don't become a pain when you're um, trying to sew. Last time, so in that you should be able to see roughly where you went last time because it's going to be the loosest thread because obviously it's not under full tension. So I keep tipping it towards me, but unfortunately, that means it tips away from your angle. 
but I don't have the equipment to film over my shoulder so I have to film from in front of me which makes the angle a little awkward And see if I show you just when I go down this one. It's starting whoop, to have me end again. Possibly should have used a slightly longer piece, but never mind. Whoop, down there. Yeah, as you can see, it's got slightly wider there than here, and that's where you've gone around it twice. And that just gives it a really good clean centre. It's not the puff look you get from doing the um, rosebud centre but it's still a very pretty centre to use. Uh, getting near the end of my thread here so it's a little more fiddly. I should have done a bit longer but that's my fault. It doesn't really matter because these ones are purely for showing you guys how to do it. They won't actually be used for anything. They just go on my display shelf with everything else. Okay, I think this is the last bit I'm going to be able to do with this piece of thread. I didn't calculate. Hopefully. But what you can do instead is just move on if your other foot, if your starting thread is longer, you left a long enough tail, you can just go through and start doing it from the other way. So you started here, so if I go through here, we're just going to be continuing on from the opposite direction to where we finished. I've only got a couple to do, so it's not going to be too difficult and no one's going to know because once you move moving your ends nobody will be able to see which end you used. So never panic if you start to run out. I mean you can always add more thread if needs be. Never worry about and you just have an extra end to weave in that's all so it won't matter. And that's the last one done. Okay, so that's new round done and they've all gone around, as you can see. So it's all been done around. Okay, so that's that one done. So what we need to do now, the yellow's not secure yet, so just be careful with it, but it should be fine. Because what we need to do is move the pink that other way, so going to just see, give it a little tug, see where it is, which is here. So this is roughly where you want to go down. You want to go down and just pop it out the way so that we've got room for the weaving. So we want to do the same with the other thread. So just undo it. See where it needs to go down by giving a little tug. And then just take it down. There you go. So they're tucked up out of the way. And then untie your greens. Might be a little bit late depending on how you've done it. Okay. I'm going to do the same, tuck the greens in. Okay. 
You'll do this step on every flower you make, tucking your ends down to the back. That's just to make sure that you've got them all done. And out of the way while you do it. And if it wraps around, remember, just flick it off. Sometimes easier said than done. There we go, so make sure it's all pushed down because you don't want to lose any of your pieces. So your ends all round and so now it's time to start doing the weaving here. But what I'm going to do first is show you what it looks like without the weaving. Because you can leave it just like this if you chose to. So if we just pop this off and pop this out. See, so you could, if you wave in your ends, you could have the flower just like that without weaving in. And that's a really pretty way. And again, that could be used for motif sewing the corners into different ones. So you don't need to do the weave woven ends like I showed at the beginning. You can just leave it like that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop it back on and show you how to do the weaving. It's going to be a little fiddly in a minute when I pop it back on. So what I'll do is I'll pop it on off camera and then come back to you. But it's just a matter of poking the ends through. Popping this on. Make sure you don't catch any of the bits. And then you're just going to find the correct one. So you find your longest. I'm just going to pop it on. And I recommend doing this on all of your threads. Do opposites for each one. So find the longest, pop it on, find the longest. Try to make sure you don't twist them because obviously when it comes to weaving you don't want them twisted at the end. So you're just going to keep finding the next one and popping them on. So I'll just pop them all back on and then I'll see you back in a second. Okay, right, so we've got them all back on, all ready to start weaving. So you just need a length of thread, again, um, yarn, whatever it is you're weaving with, that matches these ones. And so we're going to do one corner at a time. It's best to do one, then the opposite half, then the other one in the other opposite half. It just keeps it an even tension while we're doing this. Um, don't worry about the little bit loose yellow, that's just where we haven't tied off the ends yet. That will tighten up when we actually tie up the ends. So, you have the middle ones and then you have the twos that match either side. And then you have a middle one on each. So you just have to decide which one of the middle ones is going to join in with your leaf. Each one will have one join in with it. It doesn't really matter which, you just have to pick. So I'm going to go with this one. And I'm going to have it go join in with this one. Now what we're going to do is we're going to under one piece and we're over the other piece. Do you see that? So instead of picking up the whole thread and going under, we go under that one, over that one. Then we're going under that one and over that one. And what we're doing is we're going under and over on each of the flowers. Um, each of the spokes. Now it's a little fiddly because of the angles so you might not be able to do it all in one go but what you're doing is just going under and over each of the ones you're doing. So just have a little peek to make sure you're under and over each one and that you've got under and over the correct amount ones and you want to just pull it on through. You might need to go under and over an extra one on the end. It depends on the angle you manage to get your piece in. Because it is a little fiddly. But you're just pulling through until you have an end which you want to weave in. But what you can do is just tuck it out of the way for the minute. Wrap it around a couple of threads down the other end. It doesn't really matter as long as it's out your way. Um, now you won't see the first few because they're obviously going to be underneath the leaf, but you still want to make sure that you've pushed it all the way down. So first thing to do is to make sure you've got all of your ones. So done that one, you have those two, those two, 
those two. So that's what you want to check. So you want to make sure you've gone under and over each one. So I need to go under that last remaining one to complete my pass because my needle didn't reach. If you have longer needles, they'll probably reach better, which would be easier for you. I don't have longer needles, so they don't reach. Just go through there because I twisted it. There, so now they've gone under and over each one of this corner. So we're just going to push it under. So if you give both ends and give it a pull towards the flower, and that just pulls it in. Okay, so it's harder to show, but it's going to be easier to show you once we get further out, but for now. So we went over on the last one of this one, so we're actually going to go under it, over the next one, under, over, under, over. It gets a little fiddly, as I said, until you make sure you get the correct thing. So we're over that one, under that one, over. So it might look like I'm going under two there, but you do have this one thread that's just down there. Let's see that I'm over. So that's what you just have to make sure you're doing. You're going over and under for each petal until we're back to the one we started on. And you want to pull. I probably have a bit of a long piece to start with, but it's hard to judge how much you need, so give it a little push down so that they're all tight against there. As I said, it'll take a little while for it to show underneath, but you will get there. So, so we went over, under, over, under. As you get further along, they start to get into their own place, and you can see where they're supposed to go. And I give a little tug and push down just to get it started. Be careful not to twist your stitches. You don't want to pull it in so tight that you pull it um, and it narrows. You just you want to keep most of the shape, but you want it touching as well. So so we went under. So we're going to go over, under, over, under, over, under. You will need to use your finger sometimes just to help get the correct way because of the way these are set up. Okay. Again, it will be easier if you had a longer needle, but this is my longest tapestry needle. Be careful not to lift them up when you're doing it. Okay. Grab those ends, give it a little tug that way, and keep the tug that way as you pull it down. And make sure you don't catch any of the petals in it. So we're getting there, give it a little push with the needle. Okay, so we went under last time, so we're over this time. So it's, this is the basis. I think you probably all know how to weave just the matter of going under and over and we just have to get the angles correct for this so I'll tug that way and put it in give it a push down and we're getting there and you'll soon be able to see you can see it's just starting to peek out underneath there now look You can actually make flowers um, doing this weaving technique 
um, and instead of making it green in the leaves you can actually weave the petals by separating them off and you can have small flower petals so if you did it on the round one you could separate off you'd have woven petals it would make a very pretty flower um, I will do a video showing that at some point Just going to show you a few more times and then what I'll do is I'll meet you back here when we've got it all done because this takes a little while so be prepared to be sat still for a while. This is the perfect kind of thing to do while watching your favourite TV show or something. Just relax and weave in. It's really helpful if you don't get random threads from previous projects in it but I have them everywhere. <laughs> And keep going. See, I haven't caught that last one because my needle's at the wrong angle, so just flip through a little bit. Check where you were. See, I was under, so I'm over, and then I'm under again. And go, and now I'm through them all. So you don't have to do it all in one go. You can just do some, pull through slightly, and then do the rest, and then pull through all the way. So we're getting it again. Push down to make sure they don't go off. And I think we're almost at a spot where I can show you a close up and then you can go off and do it on you. Sometimes I find it's easier just to do that edge, pull a little, and then go down that edge and then you can straighten up after. So you went under that one, so we're over that one, under, over, under, and over. And then you can pull out there. And then pull it straight down like that. See, so, so there's a few different ways you can get the angle in there if you don't have a flexible needle that reaches the whole way. But it doesn't matter. Open it down. Try not to twist that one too much. But yeah, so if I come up, there we go, so you can see it's starting to weave all the way through those leaves from here to here. So I'm going to finish this off and then do the other ones and I'll meet you back when it's all done. See you soon. Okay, um, this is all done. Sorry about the lighting change. It's taken me a while to do it and we've now run out of natural light. So I'm using artificial light, so sorry about the glare. But it's now off of the loom and this is it finished. So it's not too bad, is it? Um, it's all secured and cleaned on the backlet. To weave in your ends, all you need to do is see each back loop here, just send a needle up through and you're basically weaving the strand through the um, loops and that will hide those ends for your greens and then the yellow just go round and round a few times and the same for the pink as you can see you have this tiny little notice but most of the time it won't notice so and you just turn it round and you get your flower which you can curve the leaves a bit and there you get your little flower I mean, you can have them flat if you like, it's up to you but it's all done so that is how you do flower with leaves on the square loom with that one put it in <laughs> goes in somewhere, there we go See, so that was just square loom with the middle size circle. Great that. 
So I hope you enjoyed that video and please check out my other videos showing these flowers which you have two more done on the square, two different styles and the circles, all done on the circles. These two have the rosebud um, centre and these have the back stitch centre. See, this is what it looks like on the other side. So please check out them and why not give it a go yourself. Thanks for watching.